Hi, I'm Michael Gavlin. And I'm Kate Ferdoni. Welcome back to Arts District on Rocky Mountain PBS. Life at the country's most secure prison can be pretty mundane. However, there is a way out of this monotony through the use of paint and a brush. In the last two years, more than 90 inmates participated in a creative arts program at the Federal Correctional Complex near Florence, Colorado. It gives inmates an opportunity to create all kinds of art while learning skills that can help them re-enter society. That's right. Arts District producer Scott Jones shows us the artistic talent hiding inside the prison known as Supermax. The primary goal with the creative arts platform is kind of twofold. We want to individualize the process and the experience for the inmate uh, participants as much as we can. And what I mean by that is, you know, you have different levels of security you're working with. You have uh, different levels of engagement with the participants. Some of them just want to kill time. Some of them really want to foster that identity as an artist. So Dr. Zahn and myself really take a lot of time with each participant once they get past the first phase. What we do is we basically teach them about art history in the first phase, and, and, and by doing so, we're projecting their history onto the art assignments. If they enjoy that, they move on to phase two where they get to explore anything they want. We basically help build them an individual platform. We're trying to highlight you know, their creative tendencies and help them evolve into artists. So by the time they make it to phase three, they're working on artist statements, they're working on cataloging in a portfolio. It really is a therapeutic component to it that really focuses on identity. The best thing about being a psychologist in an environment like that is what these inmates would reveal through their art and through the experience of being together as a collective. What was interesting about this uh, was it was coming out through the form of creative arts. The whole idea behind Color of Hope was to highlight how you can diminish darkness through creation. And so it really was a collective of two years worth of inmate participants. And it was fascinating to see that the majority of the work that was displayed didn't necessarily reflect what you would typically call correctional work or work from the incarcerated. So we had a few challenges with that. You know, the work that they do isn't necessarily large at this point. So some of that's due to budgeting. Some of it's just due to what we have to refrain from in terms of security working in the prison. A lot of the work that they're doing in phase one is gonna be based on art history. So they're gonna be introduced to guys like Jackson Pollock, movements like abstract expressionism, where we challenged them to try to control chaos, you know. So a lot of the work that was displayed may have had that vein. It looked like abstract expressionist work. Uh, we spend two weeks with them doing surrealist packets where they have to keep a dream journal and their final practical assignment is kind of a, a reoccurring dream or a prominent dream they had. So we had some of that on display. And we have a packet where they learn about Vincent van Gogh and the many self-portraits that he did. And so we had a lot of those on display. But also in the main gallery, we had a lot of these artists that were starting to evolve into artists themselves. The first idea to kind of move beyond the walls of the prison into the community, we reached out to Matt Taylor, who's a good friend of mine, a street artist uh, that I've known in the circuit, and just kind of playfully started a dialogue, like how cool would it be to do a mural out in the community through CAP? I thought this would be an opportunity to sort of put the federal stamp on the local community in a way that was really positive and reflected the, the positive things that the inmates are doing. I had done a few sketches based on what my ideas of the concept were going to be, like what I thought incarceration was, and I gave them those ideas and then they came back and rebuttaled basically with what it really meant to them. And they really designed the mural themselves by giving their feedback on what they thought incarceration was. We took seven camp inmates which is the low offenders that we have at the complex, out into the community and we were able to create this wonderful mural at the Colorado Prison Museum. The mural tells the story of incarceration from going in to getting out and what you experience on the inside from what you learn to what you kind of grow through as an inmate and then it ends with you being free, going back to nature. It starts off with a group of people getting shackled into the prison and then it goes through imagery of what's inside from brick walls and razors to reading books to finding a form of faith and then the things you miss. The biggest thing that they were concerned about is like the way that their families are affected by their incarceration, so that's a big part of the mural, and then it goes to them being released and going back into the world and back into the nature of things and not being incarcerated anymore. 
So they're getting to do murals at the most secure prison in the country. They're getting to do murals at historical landmarks like the Prison Museum. They're getting an opportunity to go right into a prominent art center here in Southern Colorado. And we try to walk alongside them as much as we can in that process. It's the most fulfilling art project I've ever worked on. The entire times that I'm working on the projects, they're just completely enthusiastic about it. We're working full weeks, so it's like a 40-hour work week that we're working. And at no point are they like unenthusiastic or bored or anything. They're just like so happy to be there. The biggest overreaching thing that I hear from inmates about going through this program and going back into the world is that they have a sense of excitement that they didn't have before, that the possibilities are endless, but they also have a plan. So part of what they've done through the program is to create a plan, but it also in doing that, there's still that endless possibility that maybe they didn't have before. So I like that the program isn't necessarily strictly goal-oriented, but it ends up showing results. The Creative Arts platform uses a curriculum provided by the National Gallery of Arts. Currently, there's a waiting list of over 50 inmates who want to participate. I can see why. And the murals created by these inmates have become so popular that requests are pouring in from the community. Yeah.